Welcome to the problem solving session number 8. In this problem solving session, we are going to solve some problems related to classical Langevin equation, particularly the correlation functions and so on, and also some basic cavity optomechanics. Now the first problem, given that the fluctuating noise function f of t is such that the time correlation uh, only depends on some function h of time difference you are asked to find the corresponding frequency space correlation function let us do it you are given the time correlation function for f f is the fluctuating noise function and f star of t is the complex conjugate of the function f of t and this time correlation depends on only on the time difference the function is such that it, it it's basically a function of the time difference we are asked to find out what is f of omega and f star of omega this all right now uh, we know that f of omega is the Fourier transformation of this function f of t. So the Fourier transformation, we can write it in this form. Integration from minus infinity to plus infinity. So the Fourier transform of the function uh, f star of t, that is the complex conjugate of f of t, that would be equal to again in the similar way it would be f star of omega okay therefore because the definition of Fourier because it's just a function and this is also function and kernel is e to the power i omega t as you know so therefore we can now write this frequency correlation f of omega f star of omega this i can write it as f of omega we know that would be minus infinity to plus infinity f of t e to the power i omega t dt and the other one is minus infinity to plus infinity f star of t dash e to the power i omega dash t dash dt dash all right we can now write it in this way we have this integration minus infinity to plus infinity minus infinity to double integration is there we have this dt dt dash uh, average of f of t f star of t dash e to the power i omega t plus omega this t this this is i think very straightforward now this is already given that is it's a function of uh, h the function h okay i'll write here minus infinity plus infinity here minus infinity plus infinity dt dt dash and this guy here is h t minus t dash e to the power i omega t plus omega dash t dash i can make my life simple if i go to some different variables because i know that i have here time difference is there so let's say i have t is equal to t dash plus tau and let me keep t dash is equal to t so i mean to say that we are now going from the variable t t dash to uh, tau t dash okay tau t dash right so uh, now if, if you can see that from here the jacobian of transformation here i can write it as one 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 zero 
so if i take the magnitude of the determinant of this jacobian then as you can see that would be simply equal to one so uh, therefore i can have this dt dt dash i can immediately write it as dt dash d tau so this will lead me to this integration i am going to now the variables let me actually write here again okay let me do it this way let me write f of omega f star of omega dash that would be equal to minus infinity to plus infinity minus infinity to plus infinity now i have dt dash d tau and here this function i can write it as h of tau e to the power i omega t i am now going to replace it by t dash plus tau and i have e to the power i omega dash t dash okay now i can write minus infinity to plus infinity dt dash e to the power i omega plus omega dash t dash and minus infinity to plus infinity d tau h of tau e to the power i omega tau i think it's very simple and as you know this guy is nothing it's related to the dirac delta function and that would be 2 pi delta omega plus omega dash and let me define this quantity as this function as f f star of omega where uh, i am writing s f f star of omega is the spectral noise density and this is the fourier transformation of this time correlation function h of tau and you know that this is nothing but the winner kinsin theorem and in fact uh, i can now write using uh, uh, this expression okay let me write here f of omega uh, f of omega f star of omega dash let me utilize this and using this what i can do if i integrate both sides by over omega omega dash f of omega f star of omega dash d omega dash and then i will have here 2 pi delta omega plus omega dash s f f star omega d omega dash now this is a function of only omega so i can therefore write uh, the whole thing if i take 2 pi to the other side then i have 1 by 2 pi integration integration f of omega f star of omega dash d omega dash that would be equal to s f f star omega integration delta omega plus omega dash d omega dash and you know that integration over all these things it is simply going to give you one so this spectral noise density i can write it as equal to one by two pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity f of omega f star of omega dash d omega dash okay so uh, actually what we were asked we were asked to find out uh, this quantity right this quantity and so our answer actually we have worked it out so this is what we have let us now work out this problem find the position autocorrelation function for a classical mechanical oscillator you are you have to show detailed calculations so let us do it to do this problem 
we need to uh, start with the classical Langevin equation for the harmonic oscillator which has been taught to you in the lecture class and the Langevin equation classical Langevin equation for the harmonic oscillator is m x double dot plus m gamma m x dot gamma m is the decay rate of the harmonic oscillator plus m omega m square x omega m is the resonance frequency of the harmonic oscillator and this is equal to the so-called Langevin force rather than dealing with in the time domain we can uh, go into the frequency domain that will make our calculations easier and to do that uh, we can take the Fourier transformation of this equation 1 and taking Fourier transformation we can write equation 1 in this form that would be minus taking Fourier transform Fourier transform of 1 we can write minus m omega square x of omega x of omega is the Fourier transform of the position variable and I have minus i omega gamma m okay m is also there x of omega plus m omega m square x of omega that is equal to xi of omega so this is in the frequency domain and x of omega is the Fourier transform of the position variable and that is integration minus into plus infinity x of t is the position in the time domain e to the power i omega t dt now we are going to analyze this equation uh, let's say this is equation number two this equation i can write in this form i can write it as um, let me write it as m omega m square minus omega square minus i omega gamma m x of omega that is equal to xi of omega or i can write it as x of omega is equal to 1 divided by m into omega m square minus omega square minus i gamma m omega into xi of omega this quantity we can name it as the mechanical susceptibility and this is denoted as a chi of omega so x of omega is equal to chi of omega into xi of omega xi of omega is the Fourier transform of the Langevin noise or Langevin force and where chi of omega is the mechanical susceptibility and this is m into omega m square minus omega square minus i gamma m omega to the power minus 1 okay now uh, let us uh, find out what is say x of omega x of omega dash the product of these two functions that would be as you can see uh, from here let me say this is my equation number three this is equation number four from equation three you can see that i can have chi of omega chi of omega dash xi of omega xi of omega dash now if i i have to take the uh, if i take the average then the average would be on these variables only so this is an important equation we get all right now from the previous problem what we have uh, got there we have f of omega f of omega dash 
the average of uh, this quantity that is the frequency correlation is equal to 2 pi delta omega plus omega dash sff this is the spectral density sf sff omega so we can utilize it and using this we can now write uh, let me say from equation 5 from equation 5 i can uh, and using this equation say say using 6 in 5 we can write uh, it is 2 pi delta omega plus omega dash s x x of this is the position spectral density function this is equal to chi of omega chi of omega dash 2 pi delta omega plus omega dash s psi psi of omega that is the spectral noise density for the Langevin function so if i integrating integrate both sides integrating both sides over frequency omega dash i can write delta omega 2 pi 2 pi will get cancelled out because it is on the both sides delta omega omega dash s x x omega d omega dash that would be equal to chi of omega as you can see this is very straightforward and if you have to do the calculations methodically and you have here delta omega plus omega dash s xi xi of omega d omega dash so integration is over the frequency variable omega dash so therefore i can write s x x omega integration delta omega plus omega dash d omega dash that is equal to s xi xi omega i can take it out because this is only dependent on the frequency variable omega not omega dash but here i have chi omega chi omega dash delta omega plus omega dash d omega dash so this one is obviously equal to one so therefore i have s x x of omega that is equal to now i can use the property of the dirac delta function here and then i will have it would be s xi xi of omega chi of omega into chi of minus omega omega minus omega as you can see that these two function this uh, chi of minus omega is the complex conjugate of chi of omega so therefore i can write s x x of omega is equal to modulus of chi omega square s xi xi of omega so this shows how the spectral density for the position is related to the langevin spectral density of the langevin noise or langevin force so uh, now you see since the oscillator position is uh, drive by Langevin noise, it is also a stationary variable. Now, according to Wiener Kinsin theorem, which we discussed in the class, we know that this spectral density for the position S X X omega is nothing but the Fourier uh, transform of the correlation X of t X of zero e to the power i omega t dt so this is the uh, ss so s s x uh, this particular function is the fourier transform the correlation function so from here we can uh, write x of t x of zero is equal to one by two pi that is the inverse Fourier transform I can I am writing that would be S X S of omega 
e to the power minus i omega t d omega integration limit is from minus infinity plus infinity now then i can write 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity plus infinity d omega i know that this is related to the langevin noise that is uh, by this relation chi of omega square yes this is what we have written this would be s xi xi of omega e to the power minus i omega t okay now you recall from our lectures 27 that s xi xi of omega the spectral noise density is equal to twice m gamma m k b t so using this i can write the correlation function x of t x of 0 is equal to gamma m k b t divided by pi m integration minus infinity to plus infinity and i have here e to the power minus i omega t and i just have to put chi of mod modulus of chi of omega square so if i put it then i will get omega m square minus omega square whole square plus gamma m omega whole square so this is what ultimately i have now as you can see the whole problem now boils down to solving this particular integral so now let us do that well there should be a d omega term should also be there i assume that uh, all of you know complex analysis and know how to solve contour integration now let us consider this contour integration e to the power minus i omega t omega m square minus omega square whole square plus gamma m omega whole square so this contour c uh, will take it as a let me write here contour c is assumed or taken to be better let me write taken to be taken as a semicircular i will give you the diagram semicircular contour of radius r in the complex omega or w plane so the contour i am taking of this form so i have this is say my real axis real of omega then this is imaginary omega i take a contour of this type so from here i go this side and then go this way and so this has a radius this semicircle has a radius r and this is theta okay so this is what i have this is my contour now the poles you have to work out poles of this function i think all of you know how to work out um, what is this called contour integration so first of all we have this function f of omega that is e to the power um, this is my function so let me write it as f of omega is equal to e to the power minus i omega t omega m square minus omega square whole square plus gamma m omega whole square this is my function and we have to find out the poles of this function uh, so poles of f of omega are at w values or omega values or w values for which 
for who is uh, you will see that omega m square minus omega square is equal to plus minus i omega gamma m because for this when this equation is satisfied then this particular function um, blows up okay so this is these are the uh, these are the poles so uh, if we solve this equation that will give us the poles so we have poles at omega is equal to minus i this is very easy to solve you can do it i gamma m by 2 plus omega m dash i will tell you what is omega m dash or better uh, why not let us quickly solve it i have omega square i have to just solve this equation omega square if i let me just solve one out of this there are two equation out of this two equation let me just solve quickly one equation say omega square plus i uh, omega gamma m minus omega m square is equal to zero this quadratic equation would have the solution omega is equal to minus i gamma m plus minus minus gamma m square plus 4 omega m square divided by 2 and this i can write as minus i gamma m by 2 uh, plus minus omega m dash where omega m dash is square root of omega m square minus gamma m square by 4 okay so as you will see that from one equation i have two poles and from the another equation i'll have another pole so there will be in total four poles so this is one pole another pole would be at omega is equal to minus i gamma m by 2 minus omega m dash then you will have omega is equal to i gamma m by 2 plus omega m dash and finally you will have omega is equal to i gamma m by 2 minus omega m dash so if you try to locate the poles in this contour uh, plane you will have here this is imaginary omega this is real omega and this is my contour so as you will see inside this contour i have two poles one pole is located here the other one is symmetrically located to the other side and the other two poles one is located here and one is located here as these two poles are outside this contour so we will not bother about it uh, we will bother only about this these two poles and because we are going to apply the so-called residue theorem now uh, we have the integration is this we have this contour integration f of omega d omega is equal to in the limit say r tends to infinity we have from you see you can go from minus r to plus r right so this is your r say minus r to plus r d omega f of omega this is not a complex uh, analysis class so i'm uh, being very brief here and then we are having limit r tends to infinity integration now if you go by this the semicircle thing integration around the semicircle you go from 0 to minus pi d theta f of r e to the power i theta because omega uh, inside this semicircle i am taking it as r e to the power i theta and then i will have i r e to the power i theta right so omega i am taking as inside this semicircular semicircle i am taking omega as 
r e to the power i theta and this integration is in the clockwise direction so in fact you will find that using the so called jordan's lemma this contribution from this integral will go to zero okay so therefore we will have to bother about or we will left out with integration f of omega d omega d should be equal to when i take the limit r tends to infinity plus minus infinity i will have minus into plus infinity d omega f omega so solving the integral ultimately boils down to solving this contour integration as you can see and now we can apply the so called residue theorem as you know that this complex integration f of omega d omega is equal to 2 pi i into uh, the sum of the residues sum of residues and we have two poles so we have to calculate the residues residue at omega is equal to one pole the pole that is lying inside the contour one is minus gamma m by 2 plus omega m dash and let us say this is a residue r1 and another one we have to work it out at residue at omega is equal to minus i gamma m by 2 minus omega m dash so this is residue 2 so these two residues we have to work out now only thing you have to keep in mind is that when i have taken this integration contour integration i am going in the clockwise direction and because of that i have to take a minus sign here okay so we'll do that so first let us work out what is r1 and what is r2 i will just show you the calculation for r1 r2 you can do it in the similar way before i do the calculation let me first simplify this function f of omega f of omega is equal to e to the power minus i omega t omega m square minus omega square whole square plus gamma m omega whole square so uh, this denominator let me simplify first denominator that is uh, omega m square minus omega square whole square plus gamma m omega whole square this i can write as omega square minus omega m square minus i gamma m omega into omega square minus omega m square plus i gamma m omega now we know that omega m dash square is equal to omega m square minus gamma m square by 4 so if i utilize it in this expression so let me just simple manipulation you have to do very straightforward you will get omega minus i gamma m by 2 whole square minus omega m dash square into you will have let me take it then you will have omega plus i gamma m by 2 whole square minus omega m dash square okay this you can further write as omega plus omega m dash omega m dash minus i gamma m by 2 into omega minus omega m dash minus i gamma m by 2 into omega plus omega m dash plus i gamma m by 2 into there will be four terms in total product of four terms omega minus omega m dash plus i gamma m by 2 okay so residue at r1 that is the residue at 
omega is equal to okay let me write now work out the first one that would be limit omega tends to you are going to calculate the residue at minus i gamma m by 2 plus omega m this and this would be omega plus i gamma m by 2 minus omega m this okay and then this function f of omega is there so it would e to the power minus i omega t and uh, this whole all these terms you have to put and i think okay let me let me write here anyway you will have omega plus omega m dash minus i gamma m by 2 into omega minus omega m dash minus i gamma m by 2 into omega plus omega m dash plus i gamma m by 2 into omega minus omega m dash plus i gamma m by 2 as you can see this way you can very easily calculate it you just put the put the numbers there then you will get r1 let me write the final expression you are going to get r1 as e to the power minus i omega m dash minus i gamma m by 2 into t divided by twice omega m dash minus i gamma m into minus i gamma m twice omega m dash okay this is what we will have as r1 similarly please verify it yourself you will get r2 the residue at the other pole r2 would be equal to e to the power my uh, minus i minus i gamma m by 2 minus omega m dash into t divided by minus twice omega m dash minus i gamma m into minus twice omega m dash minus i gamma m okay so this is what you will get so now we can work out this integration so integration minus infinity to plus infinity f of omega d omega is 2 pi i into sum of the residues I think this is little bit uh, algebra but straightforward algebra please do that you just have to add these two terms and do the manipulation then finally you should get pi e to the power minus gamma m t by 2 divided by gamma m omega m square then here you will have cos omega m dash t plus gamma m divided by twice omega m dash sine omega m dash t so this is what you will get so therefore finally we can now obtain because the integration we have worked out so we have the this correlation autocorrelation for the position x of t x of 0 is equal to we had this term gamma m kbt by pi m and that integral was there so integral now we have worked out that is pi e to the power minus gamma m t by 2 gamma m omega m square so let me once again write here that is cos omega m dash t plus gamma m by 2 omega m dash sine omega m dash t so uh, or if i simplify it uh, further i have x of t x of 0 is equal to kbt divided by m omega m this is square omega m 
square e to the power minus gamma m t by 2 and we have cos omega m dash t plus gamma m by twice omega m sine omega m dash t so this is the required answer so if you are not convinced or finding it difficult you can quickly verify uh, whether this makes sense for example if you note uh, that x of 0 x of 0 okay that you will see that you will get it as kbt by m omega m square right and from here you can write say half m omega m square x of 0 square is equal to as you can see this would be simply half kbt and you know that this is the so-called equipartition theorem now let us work out this problem the phase shift of the reflected light is measured to be pi in a typical optomechanical setup given kvt length is 1 micrometer the resonance frequency of the kvt is 4 pi into 10 to the power 15 hertz the kvt decay rate is 5 megahertz estimate the magnitude of displacement of the movable mirror in the system okay let us solve it as you know that light can enter into the cavity when the resonance condition is made and the reflected light undergoes a phase shift for small displacement that the phase the phase shift theta linearly depends on the mirror displacement x okay and this is given by this formula which we talked about in the lecture class theta is equal to 4 by kappa kappa is the cavity decay rate omega optical that is the resonance frequency of the cavity divided by the l divided by l l is the length of the cavity and x is the displacement so in this particular problem we just need to apply this part, uh, formula and we are given theta is equal to pi l is equal to one micrometer and resonance frequency is given to be 4 pi into 10 to the power 15 hertz and decay rate cavity decay rate is 5 megahertz what is not given is the displacement and we have to find it out so that is uh, from the formula we have x is equal to kappa l divided by 4 omega optical into theta so if i put the parameters here kappa is 5 megahertz so that is 5 into 10 to the power 6 hertz and then l is equal to 1 micrometer that is 10 to the power minus 6 meter and theta is equal to pi and we have 4 into omega of this 4 pi into 10 to the power 15 so if you put all this then we will obtain uh, 5 divided by 16 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter or i can write it as 3.125 into 10 to the power minus 16 meter so this is the answer <music>